friends it's Amanda here and today we are gonna do a little try on style haul I have a bunch of new indie brand makeup two out of the three brands featured in this video are completely brand new to me I've never tried anything from them before so that's always really exciting for me and I just want to dig right in so let's start with M cosmetics I've had my eye on M Cosmetics for a really long time. I feel like their whole aesthetic is going to work really well for me. Their whole vibe is very soft and glowy and I love that. That really appeals to me. So I did pick up four items from M Cosmetics. Two are for cheeks and two are for lips. First is the Color Drops Serum Blush. I think this is probably one of their most well-known items. I got the color Rose Milk. Here's a little close-up of the product and the packaging. This looks really cute, really sleek. Seems like a cool girl thing to have. I kind of feel like a cool girl now. I just reviewed the ColourPop serum blushes and a lot of people were asking for a comparison to these. I had never tried these before. Today is my first day testing these out. So I couldn't make that comparison in the ColourPop video. But now I've tried it, so that's pretty exciting. I will say, texture-wise, they seem pretty similar. The M Cosmetics serum blushes are a little bit more liquidy. The ColourPop ones are more of a gel type of texture. So for this one, the top screws off and then there's a little dropper to dispense the blush. This little bottle is a bit smaller than I expected. I think just seeing it in photos, I expected it to be a little bit bigger. This is 10 milliliters. That's still plenty of blush, but this is something that I needed to layer up quite a bit. I'll show you some video of me applying this serum blush. On the box it says to dispense one drop to cover both cheeks and I ended up needing to use two drops on each cheek to get the desired color payoff that I wanted, but I really like the finish of this. It stays very, very dewy on the cheeks which probably is not great for things like wearing a mask all day or if you have really oily skin. Personally, I have very, very dry skin and my desired look is a casually sweaty cheek. So this is the type of product I personally really enjoy. I did end up layering the other blush product that I picked up from M Cosmetics just because I was too excited and I really wanted to try both. This is the Heaven's Glow Radiant Veil Blush in the shade Venetian Rose. This is a new shade. So here's the outer packaging. This blush compact feels really nice. It definitely feels really luxurious and it has a little magnetic closure. I love that. Something about that is just so satisfying to me. And then opening up inside, there is a mirror in here. Then you can see the blush itself is a baked texture. It has a little bit of shimmer to it. Very, very pretty. So I did end up layering a little bit of this Venetian Rose on top of my serum blush. And those two formulas worked really well together. They gave me a beautiful, soft, glowy cheek. I love a really, really glowy cheek look. And I'm not wearing any highlighter today. I'm just going with this double layered glowy blush look. And I think it looks great. It looks very lit from within. It looks very moisturized and healthy. A little bit of a casually sweaty cheek, but not too much. Here's a quick swatch of both blushes. This is, of course, the serum blush in the shade Rose Milk. And then we have the baked blush in Venetian Rose. I also chose two lip products from M Cosmetics. First is a gloss. I actually haven't worn this one yet. This is the True Gloss in the shade Caramel Glaze. Again, packaging is super sleek and pretty. I really like their whole packaging and brand aesthetic. The gloss has a little slanted doe foot applicator and it does have a vanilla scent. Definitely a strong cake batter vanilla scent, which I like, but I know some people don't like really strongly scented makeup, so I thought that was worth mentioning for you. The other lip product in my little M Cosmetics order is the Lip Cushion. This is a tinted lip luminizer 
and this is in the shade Venetian Rose as well. Have a little monochromatic packaging look here. This is the shade that I'm wearing on my lips throughout the video. For this one, you twist the bottom and those little clicks push the product up. This is really, really soft and glossy looking on the lips. It definitely looks like a really, really creamy lipstick. When I was first applying it, I was surprised by how soft it was. I almost went a little too hard with it at first. So this is super comfy, super hydrating. Definitely the type of thing that you're gonna have to touch up throughout the day because it is so glossy, it's not really transfer proof. Really, really pretty shade, definitely right up my alley shade wise, and it feels super comfy on the lips too. This is the Gloss and Caramel Glaze. Really impressed from the initial swatch how opaque this gloss is. And then this is the Lip Cushion in the shade Venetian Rose. Can you tell I love a neutral nude lip? <laughs> Cause I do. The last two items in this little mini indie haul are both eyeshadow palettes. I am an eyeshadow palette fanatic, so that should not be a surprise to anyone. First is this one from Beauty by Stoney. This is the Remedy 2 palette. It's the Coco eyeshadow palette. The first Remedy palette is one of my favorite indie palettes. It was in my best of 2019. It's one of my top palettes for sure. So when I saw that there was a volume two coming out, I was so excited. I could not wait to grab this from their site. The original Remedy palette was 12 pans and this is 15. So this is a slightly bigger palette. This one came with a little sleeve that the palette itself slides out of, but it's the same artwork on the sleeve and on the front of the palette. It has a nice luxurious feeling to it. It actually feels a little bit heavier than the original palette. Obviously it's larger, but I mean the packaging itself has a little bit more heft to it. It has a soft touch matte feel. The cover art is really fun and funky. And then looking inside, there is a really nice big mirror in here. And then all 15 shades laid out in three rows. I'm a little bit bummed to see that the shade names aren't printed inside next to the pans. I know that doesn't really matter to everybody. From a review standpoint, it makes my life a lot easier. And just aesthetically, if the shadows have names, I like it when they're printed in there. It did come with this little card that tells me what the shade names are, which I'm sure I will promptly lose. We do have to give indie brands a little bit of a break. So not a deal breaker, it's just I miss the shade names personally. We've got a nice mix of finishes in here. There are eight mattes and seven shimmers. There's a lot of really chocolatey neutrals in here, which makes perfect sense since this is the Cocoa eyeshadow palette. And then there are some really fun pops of color. There's a little minty green here, a neon pink, a bright blue, then a really, really light minty green. This wine color here is super, super pretty. So this is definitely an interesting mix of colors. Let's do some little swatches and see if these shadows live up to the original Remedy palette because the formula in that palette is so good, it's crazy. Okay, so I gotta be honest with you, this palette is not love at first swatch. The first Remedy palette, the 12 pan one, that palette was love at first swatch. I was actually at the makeup show in DC back when public gatherings were a thing. When I first learned about this brand, I walked past their booth, I just quickly touched a couple of the shadows and I was blown away, especially by a few of the really deep matte colors. There's a deep matte green and a deep matte purple and those are typically more difficult to formulate type of shades. You will often see shades like that come off a little patchy at first swatch and those shadows were so impressive. One of my friends that was there with me was laughing a little bit because I was losing my mind over this palette and I didn't really get that same initial love at first swatch reaction with this palette. The mattes do feel a little bit stiffer, a little bit drier. The shimmers in here are really soft, silky, very opaque. Look, we know swatches aren't everything. Some shadows don't even perform well with a finger swatch and then they end up looking great with a brush swatch. 
That's why when I do my palette reviews, I always show you finger swatches, brush swatches, and often I'll do a tutorial as well because to really give a shadow a chance, you gotta try it in all those different ways. So I am by no means writing this off or saying that it's not a great palette, but that initial experience not carrying over to the Remedy 2 palette. But you know what? We'll do maybe a little palette bingo or something with this. I think that could be really fun, especially given this more random layout of the palette. Overall, jury is kind of out, but I wish I was having that same reaction for the first swatches of this that I did with the first Remedy palette. The very last product that I want to talk about is this palette from Lethal Cosmetics. They had a sale on custom palettes and I'd been wanting to try this brand for a while. I 100% blame my friend Teresa. Teresa is dead. Use her code GARBAGE to save 10% on Lethal Cosmetics. I did. All the cool kids are doing it. So I built this palette on their site. First of all, their palette designer on their website is so incredibly well done. I've never seen a build your own palette done this way in such a marvelous technical fashion. Even if you're not going to order anything, just go play with their palette builder because it's really fun and it's really, really, really well done. Anyway, I regret to inform you that I have made the world's most perfect palette. And if you disagree, that's fine. But this is the perfect palette for me. I love it so much. So much. It's exactly half matte, half shimmer. We have light, medium, and deep shades. We've got a whole row of purple, obviously, that I'm wearing today because purple is my favorite eyeshadow color. I've got some great staple neutrals, a mustardy yellow, gorgeous sort of berry, warm, pinky reds, and then even a green. Who thought that there would be a green in my perfect palette, but here we are. Now, if you want to talk about love at first swatch, oh my gosh, these shadows are so beautiful. The mattes are incredibly soft, yet still easy to work with. They're not so soft that they crumble as soon as you touch them with a brush. They hold up well to brush application. They look beautiful on the eye, if I do say so myself. <laughs> You'll get to see a little tutorial here in a second. A couple of things. Lethal Cosmetics is based in Germany. Shipping to the US was pretty expensive, and the products themselves are expensive. I'm not gonna lie, this palette is like $70, but these are incredibly high quality, unique, indie made cosmetics, and that is just gonna be a little bit more expensive. In my opinion, something like this is completely worth it, but I don't think I would be doing justice to you, my viewer, <laughs> if I didn't warn you ahead of time after telling you how great this palette is and how you should go play on their website. It's expensive. It's it's pricey to make one of these palettes. I think it's worth it. Might not be worth it to you. To me, it is. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some swatches of this palette and I do just want to let you know that several of these shadow shades are new shades from Lethal. So Limbo, Lithium, Esteem, Covet, Corrosion, Undone, Revolve, and Deceit are all new single shadows from them. So not only is this a fun haul and my perfect eyeshadow palette, but we're also getting to see some brand new shadows in action. So that's fun too. It's probably pretty obvious at this point. I love this palette. Of course, I got to choose the colors, so I already love the color story. But these shadows are so beautiful. They perform beautifully. They wear beautifully. From the moment I got this, I started playing with it. I can't tell you how impressed I am with Lethal Cosmetics, with the performance of these shadows. I will absolutely be a returning customer. The palette itself is really cool too. There's a mirror in here and then on the back, there are these little holes so it's really easy to pop out the magnetic shadows to rearrange them, switch them out, replace them. All around just design, formula, website, 
customer service top to bottom has been a really 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 good experience with lethal cosmetics now to cut myself off from continuing to rave about my palette that i designed i'm gonna go ahead and show you a quick tutorial using my custom palette from lethal and then i'll wrap up all my thoughts at the end I love how my look turned out. Purple is my favorite eyeshadow color to wear, so it's kind of hard to go wrong once you get some really beautiful purple shadows on the eye. I'm gonna be happy with that no matter what. Overall, I'm really happy with all of these indie brand purchases that I made. I think there are some pretty clear standouts for me personally. This Venetian Rose blush and the custom palette from Lethal Cosmetics are the two things that I'm initially the most excited about. I haven't had a ton of time to play with these, but so far these are my two top picks from this little indie haul. I'm absolutely gonna keep playing with all these products. I'd love to hear what you think about these things. Do you want to see a video with the Remedy 2 Cocoa palette? Do you have any favorite products from the brands that I talked about today? I'm always interested in trying new things and exploring new brands and I always love to hear what you think about things too. So make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Hmm. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, <laughs> aesthetic is going to real it uh, 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 <laughs> from N M N M N <sighs> a neon yellow. Oh, that's not yellow. That's pink. Wow. Okay. What is my dog barking at? Is there mail? The people want to know. You're still in the game though. It's okay. You're still in the game. And I, I've been, I, uh, I, I can't, I'm so flustered because I'm so excited. Wow, what a weirdo. Okay, sorry about that. Mm.
I know everybody's gonna ask about my earrings because they're so fun and glorious. I love them so much. I know I talk about by Mel Klein all the time. These are from by Mel Klein. I'm pretty sure that they were one of a kind and they were called the Amanda. So obviously I bought them. I don't know if these are named after me or not. Um, I don't care if they were or weren't because I love them. I mean, it's a pink tie-dyed butterfly filled with glittery sparkly stars with a purple cloud and a pink heart. Such a magical little dream. I love them. Whenever you see me wearing fun, funky acrylic earrings like this, they're always from By Mel Klein. I have a coupon code. It's not an affiliate code. I don't make any money. I'm not taking any of Mel's money, but you should use it and buy her earrings because she is amazing. I mean, hello, hello. Wow, I really need to calm it down. Everything's fine. Everything's fine over here. Don't worry about it, okay? Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Do you remember that TikTok? Okay. Anyway, I'm just talking to myself now and uh, I'm gonna go be joyful in sparkly earrings and purple eyeshadow and I hope that you'll find something to be joyful about today too and if you don't then I'm sorry I know how that feels and just know that I love your face and maybe that will help a little bit okay anyway love your face I'll talk to you soon okay I'll see you soon okay bye <laughs>